It is now a well-known, heavily studied fact that the modern-day bird was once a very different-looking animal, evolution in the form of a radical transformational adaptation, forced upon them by gradual changes in the Earth's environment, from which they whence came, that being the dinosaur. We now know this to be fact, thanks to modern technology. Our capability to now scan these fossils, some found remarkably well-preserved, still fortunately containing many things, which have allowed us to discover that dinosaurs had bird brains, or more accurately, birds have dinosaur brains. With current investigations even shining light upon the reality that many of these gigantic animals, including the T-Rex, once had manes made of feathers. This drastic change from the dinosaur, resulting in the vast array of creatures we see today, from the ostrich to the albatross, even to the commonly domesticated budgerigar, yet they all share one common trait, a significant reduction in their size. Even animals which survived unchanged, such as the crocodile, still shrank considerably. This shrinking of said species having been demanded of them by environmental changes. Evolutionary adaptation, as we have covered in the past, is, in the channel's opinion, in its true sense, an adaptation of specific sets of vertebrate types, the true definition of species, not as Darwinian theory posits, of leaps between such. Thus, evolution witnessed within the animal kingdom is not indicative of a shared single ancestry, but inseparable branching from specific vertebrae or phyla groups, never proven to have leaped from one to another. As such, modern-day birds could in fact be seen as the product of de-evolutionary adaptation. This loss of size would in all probability have also resulting in a deterioration in their intellectual potential this being due to the considerable decrease in brain mass, possibly derived from cataclysm, which deprived them of the resources needed to remain at such gigantic sizes. The reason for this digression is the channel's postulation of this same process, having once possibly occurred to Homo sapiens also. Could this explain why some of the oldest ruins are also some of the most advanced? with many remaining beyond the reach of modern man's ability to understand them. Is it possible that man once had a much higher intellect than us today, due to a far greater sized cranium? Simply put, were we once giants, just as modern-day birds were once dinosaurs? Legends and accounts of ancient giants can be found all over the world, also featuring in many ancient religious teachings. Additionally, many of the still unexplained sites of Earth regularly feature doorways many feet, sometimes even meters above that which is required by and for humans of our modern scale. The Terracotta Army, for example, is believed by many independent researchers, including Mystery History, to have been made by a lost civilization, and their average height, intriguingly, is much taller than modern man. Many accounts exist of giants, which share similar descriptive characteristics. Red hair, double-rowed teeth, elongated skulls, etc. With many accounts of red-headed giant remains actually discovered and excavated all over the world, yet often all that survives of these reported events is a small news article, regularly noting Smithsonian involvement in said recoveries, yet seemingly and conveniently always slipping away from the public domain. Lovelock Cave being another example, locals tell of it once being the home of a group of red-headed giants, which was eventually blocked and the giants burnt alive, a giant handprint still visible on a rock in the cave, presumably made by one of these individuals during their unpleasant demise. Yet what has to be the most compelling piece of evidence, fortunately still in view to suggest giants did indeed once exist, are footprints found all over the globe, once laid down upon sediment, now fossilized into solid stone. These footprints range in size up to a few meters in length, indicating that humans, at some point in the distant past, 
may have been even larger than many dinosaur species. This would have undoubtedly given them the capability to have moved the ancient megaliths we often cover, and also the ingenious nature of many of said sites due to a larger brain. Are these footprints proof that we too, just like the modern bird, were once monstrous in size? Yet at some point within antiquity, experienced a similar or the same cataclysmic events which forced a shrinking of our mass over many generations. Could this de-evolution have been due to what titled the axis of the Earth? When our Earth was aligned, did it have the ability to provide and sustain such growth? Once providing a suitable habitat for an abundance of resources, required for the far greater size food chain witnessed during the Jurassic period? We find the evidence to support the hypothesis of giant ancient humans highly compelling. Within a place called Laos, a landlocked country in the heart of the Indo-Chinese peninsula, is probably one of the most confusing archaeological sites on Earth. We have often covered possible evidence left within countless newspaper archives, log witness testimonies, and indeed many stolen bodies of a type of ancient human far larger than we are today. Additionally, there have been many intriguing ancient giant artifacts which have been found at many sites around the world, tools, utensils, and structures, created in such scales they would be virtually useless in the hands of modern-sized people. And our archaeological site within Laos could perhaps be seen as one of the more compelling remnants possibly left by this gigantic race of humans. However, what is seemingly the most perplexing mystery regarding this site is the aptly named Frogman, discovered at the center of this entire historical puzzle. Known as the Plain of Jars, it is an enormous ancient site, littered with countless giant stone jars, manufactured to such a scale they are clearly too large for any practical use by humans of today. Numbering over 400 at just one site, the original purpose for these stone jars high up in these locations, if indeed they were manufactured by our ancient ancestors, is a question which has evaded modern explanation and may remain impossible to answer. Out of the many hundreds of jars, it would seem none were ever decorated all remained completely blank, except one single jar. A single giant jar adorned with the image of a frogman. According to academia, the jars date from the Iron Age around 500 BC, although any compelling reasoning for this remains elusive. It is undoubtedly one of the most important prehistoric sites in Southeast Asia, and it undoubtedly deserves more attention. Who carved these enormous jars? Why make them to such enormous and thus impractical sizes? Where did the stone come from? Or indeed, how were they carried to their final resting places high up on these plateaus? Were they possibly made by a race of giants? Who is our frogman character? Was this single image a signature, left by the original makers of these giant jars? Unfortunately, we may never know. We have in the past covered the remarkable legends and in particular the intriguing enormous tombs which cover the Mediterranean island of Sardinia, long claimed as the resting places of some 800 or so ancient giants who once belonged to a now lost race of beings. It is undeniable that the scale of these inner chambers is of considerable size, most capable of housing remains of a size of 15 feet or more in height. There are, undeniably, many compelling pieces of written reports, and indeed photographic evidence of the discovery of ancient giant remains. Yet nearly all seemingly vanish into thin air, many shortly following the mention of the involvement of certain academic institutions. Such as the claim 3,000 or so remains claimed to have been excavated by Ralph Glidden on Santa Catalina Island, located within the Channel Islands during the early 20th century, all of which now lost. However, like the many ancient Uparts we share, 
There are that rare few which have fortunately made their way into the hands of private collectors or individuals lacking any agenda but that of revealing the truth of these objects' existence. And one such scenario involves that of a Luigi Muscus, a man who actually owns farmland on the island of Sardinia, upon which he claims to have found gigantic molars of a hominid appearance. In tandem with her appearance on the program Coast to Coast AM in the US, Paola Harris shared his extraordinary photos. After looking into the artifacts ourselves, we have indeed found an argument which will undoubtedly be used to dismiss the finds as that of ancient cave bear teeth, yet the root patterning, and indeed crown of the molar like that of the partial jaw also shared, seem to us to be more reminiscent of giant human skulls rather than the patterning of prehistoric bears. What's more, it must not be ignored that surrounding the claimed discovery site are indeed the aforementioned and gigantic ruins and the legends of individuals large enough to have once housed such teeth in their mouths, which all persist on the island to this day. What do you think? An ancient giant's molar and lower jaw? Or simply that of the remains of a prehistoric animal? It is a legend and indeed series of discoveries which we find highly compelling. We have, in the past, explored the incredible discovery of the mythological animal sculptures of Persepolis, now known as the Lamassu. We detailed the difficulty involved in transporting just a single example of one to London a mere century ago. Yet, it would seem a similar situation seemingly also occurred at the ancient site of Amethyst, one in which the French quietly endured and restrictively documented. Located east of Agio Tychonus, next to Limassol in southern Cyprus, strategically commanding a stunning view of the surrounding Mediterranean landscape. The main acropolis of Amethyst, sitting just out of reach of the tourist track, atop the hill above. This location served also as an additional natural fortification for the site and its ancient observatory. Impressive discoveries have been made at the ruin, including ancient basins, vases, and various other utensils used by past inhabitants of varying eras. Atop the hill were two giant vases decorating the entrance to the main temple, one once dedicated to the god of love Aphrodite, each of which being 1.85 meters tall and weighing an immense 14 tons each one of which being stolen by the French, specifically architect Edmond de Thoit, during the Ottoman occupation of Cyprus, supposedly given permission to take it away to his country. It now rests in the Louvre Museum in Paris. His documentation of this ordeal, we feel, is a revealing insight into the clear prohibition from exposing the astonishing capabilities of ancient civilizational capability. He reservedly wrote of the ordeal of getting it back to Paris in his diary. Quote, Our last day was dedicated to Amethyst, the only sanctuary of Aphrodite that we visited. There we found two huge stone vases, 3.4 meters in diameter. I could not figure out the amount that was buried in the ground, and only a measure of the artifact which was sticking out. I thought if I manage to get it out of there and to convey it into the sea, it will be my biggest achievement. I will begin to study the ways and mechanisms needed to achieve this and to have it transferred. This will create a big impression in the Louvre." End quote. Who made these vases, or indeed the Acropolis itself? They were clearly astonishing vases, having existed to this day and beyond and along with their sheer weight, we undoubtedly find them highly compelling.